I'm Olivia Bailey, and if you are seeing me right now, you're probably watching EHC TV on Comcast Cable, or you might be listening to WEHC 90.7. Whether you're seeing or hearing me right now, I'm glad you're tuned in. My guests today are some special guests that we have on Emory and Henry's campus. We have John Stryevsky and Paul Stoltz. Two free agent kickers who are looking to go into the NFL. Guys, thanks for being on the set today. Thanks, thanks for much. having us. Appreciate it. So you both um, went to college at Delaware. Um, can you kind of talk about where you started out in football and how you ended up at Delaware? Want to go first? Sure. Um, well, when I was in high school, uh, uh, football is a big thing in my community, in my town at home. I mean, we get seven to 10,000 fans a week. Uh, for high school games, so the town pretty much shuts down. Um, when I was a junior, soccer started to pass me by a little bit. This wasn't, I guess, as fast as I needed to be to play, play that sport anymore. So I found something that I could excel at that didn't really involve a ton of running or speed. Um, so started to kick footballs and really just from that point on just kept progressing, going to the next level everywhere I went. What about uh, you, Paul? My story is a lot different than John's. Uh, I never kicked a football, played football in high school or anything. I actually didn't start playing until I was a second semester junior in college um, when I walked on at the University of Delaware. And John actually was a starting kicker at the time and uh, was a big part of uh, running my tryout. So, uh, yeah, I walked on as a, as a junior and uh, just been playing ever since. So it, sounded like, it sounds like you both kind of had a late start for people who you would think would be entering the football league. I mean, um, how, d how did you guys realize that this was ultimately what you wanted to do in your career? To play pro ball, I mean, I think when you watch the guys on TV doing what you do, uh, at a younger age, you're like, wow, I could never do that. That level is so amazing and so incredible, their consistency, their ability. But as you get older and older and you start to, I guess, train more and kick more and see more, you realize that, okay, maybe it's not so far out of reach. And as you keep playing, I think what you really run into is you see those guys out on the field and, and up close and, and actually just, you know, on the other sideline, you realize, well, it's not so far-fetched that it could be me instead of them. Uh, but the thing is, when you get higher and higher, guys get better and better, and it starts to really kind of just weed out guys that have marginal ability or even great ability, um, but you need all the intangibles and all the packages to keep moving up the ladder each year. And I, I guess um, you both here are tr training here with uh, Coach Doug Blevins, um, well-known in the NFL, actually, um, has received a nomination for the NFL Hall of Fame. How did you end up at Emory & Henry to start training to go into the National Football League? Uh, well, for me, uh, my trainer, Chris Honorado, back home, he worked with Doug Blevins when he was trying to make it into the NFL. And uh, he always recommended to me that when I was ready, this is the, the path I should take, and Doug would help me to take my game to the next level so that I could um, see uh, success in my, in my future, hopefully in the NFL one day. Um, but Doug is one of the premier coaches in the country and I knew that this was the, st the, the path I had to take. And then John went down a couple months before me, and I realized, you know, now's the time. And, okay, well, take me through a typical day. I mean, I guess you think of training for the NFL as just really hardcore, but it looks like you guys can have some fun here and, here and there. Take me through your typical day training oh. right now. We're kickers. We're not quarterbacks, so it's a little <laughs> bit different, I think, for us than anybody else. But uh, I'd say your standard day you're looking at, we get up uh, kind of whenever we feel like it because we don't have anywhere to be. Uh, we'll go hit the gym typically, uh, kick about 50 balls with Coach if he comes out that day, and um, go work at the bar across the street. It's pretty much nothing too exciting or glamorous, but uh, it's your day-in and day-out grind that we're pretty used to by now. I think for any athlete, the ultimate goal is being a professional athlete. I think you always have that in the back of your mind, whether you think it's possible or not. When you were going to college at Delaware, did you think that you would end up in the football league, the National Football League? Well, I was not a walk-on. chance for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> both of us, I guess, were yeah, walk-ons. We were both walk-ons, but uh, I mean, for me, like I said, starting late, as late as I did, it, it was never it was never anything I even thought of. It was just a dream for me to be able to step on a Division One field and, and put a uniform on. I mean, that was awesome for me, coming from not knowing how to kick a football, never putting a helmet on or anything. Do you want to tell her about putting your pads on the first time? Uh, I was trying to avoid that, but uh, I didn't know how. So I'm in the locker room, and John's kind of just staring at me. He didn't want to help because he just wanted to see how everything would progress. and. I ended up just holding pads up, and he'd like point to the part of body where I should put that pad on. So, so, kind of so from then until now, what was that moment that you you knew that this dream was possible? Was there a specific moment where you were like, 
I could see myself as a professional athlete. My junior year, I was the first team All-American, and I think um, that year really kind of it clicked for me that I had the ability to do it. Um, you know, seeing your name in, in the same company as some of the guys that are playing in the pros now, uh, Dan Carpenter for the Miami Dolphins. Um, you know, Randy Bullock, those kind of guys. You see them around, you're like, okay, wow. Well, you know, going through school, that was really that it moment when you're like, okay, well, regardless of how big the school you're playing at is, you put the stats up, you put the numbers up, and you're going to be right in that same conversation as everybody else. Now, for both of you, is this a career that you see yourself retiring in? I mean, that's the goal. I, would, I mean, somebody wants to pay me a million dollars to kick a football, I mean, I'd be crazy <laughs> to say no. Uh, I would love to be able to do that for, you know, until I'm 40 however old till I retire. You know, John Carney didn't retire till he was 45, Morton Anderson 47, so. It's the nice dream to have that, you know. Um, I think it's important for everyone to have a backup plan uh, to be good at something else, you know. We have degrees, so it's not like uh, if it doesn't work out for us, we'll be out in the street. Uh, I think we'll be okay. But uh, if I could kick till I was around 40, I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't complain about it. And Paul, uh, one thing that I really want to highlight here, we were talking a little bit before, before the show, um, you were able to get in on some three-on-three -three basketball tournament action here at Emory, so you've been able to get involved. Tell me about that experience with that basketball tournament. Well, first of all, I got to prove that kickers can be athletes too, and that's most important. <laughs> but uh, no, it was a lot of fun. It's kind of interesting for me and John because, you know, we already got our degrees, already graduated from college, and, and here we are almost posing as you know, scholar athletes, student athletes without the scholar or student in front of them. We're just around campus all the time. People see us, know us from the bar, and it was really cool. I had a couple of buddies that uh, asked me to join their team, uh, Jeremiah, Blaine, and uh, Tyler Driver, and we uh, went undefeated in the tournament, took home the championship, got some uh, $10 gift cards to Walmart. So. Awesome. Well, congratulations. Um, my last question to both of you is, what has your experience been here at Emory & Henry? You're obviously not from the area. What has it been like living in Southwest Virginia, coming down here to you know practice with Coach Blevins? Certainly, I think the first week you come down, uh, being that I'm from the suburbs of a major city, it's a little bit different. Uh, people drive a little bit slower. Uh, but the first noticeable thing is that how nice everybody is. Um, the community here at school uh, has been so welcoming to both of us uh, with either these the facilities um, or just even, you know, in passing, people say hello here. Uh, you don't really walk down the street hoping that people ignore you or avoid you like you do walking down the streets of Philadelphia. What about you, Paul? I mean, I was going to say the exact same thing. People say hello. Nobody <laughs> says hello where I'm from. I'm from Long Island, New York, and I'm in the city all the time. John is in Philadelphia all the time, and that's the biggest difference. Just everybody's welcoming. Everybody wants to know what anybody's story is. And when they hear that me and John are trying to make the NFL, they just want to ask us about it and, and see, you know, not just what we're doing, but what we're like as people. And nobody takes the time to do that back home. So, Well, I appreciate you guys coming on the set and talking to me today. I'm really glad that I've had the opportunity to meet you guys since you've been here. Um, and I wish you the best of luck in both of your careers. Thank you very much. We oh, appreciate nice. that. Thanks. You've been listening to this sports interview on EHC TV. I'm Olivia Bailey. We'll join you next time.